Hey guys, Matt here and welcome to episode 22 of Generation Tech. And this week, Rich and I are going to be talking about our most anticipated games of this holiday season. Stay tuned. Generation Tech, the weekly video cast for your inner geek, bringing you the hottest tech news from around the world. Brace yourselves, the show's about to start. It's Generation Tech. Here's your host, Rich Nieto and Matthew Burrows. And again, welcome. It's episode 22 of Generation Tech. So excited to be here. It's October 30th, 2014, the day before Halloween. I mean, geez, this, this day, this year is just flying by. I don't know about you, but it feels like next month is, well, not feel. It is. Well, pretty much a month from now, it's December. Like, after, after Halloween, it's like two week intervals and it's holidays. It's just two weeks of school, then it's Thanksgiving, then two weeks of school, then it's Christmas. Yeah. So. It's crazy. It's it's amazing. I, I love this time of year after th- after Halloween. My wallet just gets blown yeah. out. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> I got uh, Kelly to take care of for th- for Christmas. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You just give her the list. Yeah, she gives me a list. I give her the list. We t- you know it is what it is. She does all the bu- all the technically the buying, so you don't have to feel bad. Yeah, about dude. It. I am I am probably the hardest person to buy a gift for because throughout the year I buy everything I want for myself. So she has mm-hmm. no idea what to get me. She's not into tech really. So. Um, I, I used to have, I usually put a Amazon wishlist together and she picks off of that. Although last year she picked everything off of it. She didn't just like pick and choose one or two. So, uh, I might have to scale back a little bit before, before she spends a bajillion dollars again. But anyway, today's going to be a little bit different episode. We're going to be talking about the state of gaming because like I said, it's approaching holiday season and there's a lot of good games coming out, which it's good, but then again, it sucks because like there's so much coming at, at you at once. We don't really get a chance to play it all. I wish they kind of like scattered them up throughout the year, but hey, this is the big time. This is prime time for gaming. This is when um, all the moms and dads are going out there to Toys R Us or GameStop to buy games for their kids. And um, you know, when you see the next Call of Duty out there, you sure as hell are gonna know that the parents know the name. They know the the how big of a game it is with kids, so they're going to be uh, more likely to buy it. So, we're going to go over some of our biggest games that we're anticipating this upcoming season. Um, Matt has a PlayStation 4 currently, but he's also had an Xbox. Um, So, we're going to talk about the general state of gaming after we go over those games, um, where they stand a year later. Hard to think about it. It's been almost a year that these two consoles have been out, you know? Yeah. It's pretty, and it's funny because it's like you could think back of everything that's come out on them because like nothing has come out on these consoles yet. But we'll, we'll go into <laughs> yeah, that yeah. a little later. That is until this holiday and next year, as we'll be talking about. And maybe a research of the Wii U. I'll talk a little about that. I got a Wii U. I'm kind of anticipating some stuff, so I will go into that a yeah. little later. And a couple of other tech stuff here, a little stuff uh, about Tim Cook and YouTube stuff. So. Uh, stay tuned. We have a big uh, pack game uh, episode this week. So, let's start off with our biggest games that we're really anticipating. All right. So, since you only have one console, only one console. Um, that you really only, you only have to focus on one console. So it's yeah. kind of easier for you. Um, Which a lot of the titles that we have selected are, um, they're not. We don't really. We only have one xbox exclusive we have a couple playstation exclusives and a couple wii u exclusives so it's true yeah um but a lot of them are all multi-platform yeah and you know that's that's the thing it really is pick whatever console you really prefer i mean there's a couple of exclusives here and there but for the most part all the big titles are on all the consoles so Mm -hmm. why don't you start off with your list and um i'll go on after you so you want me to just run down the list, or do you want me? Yeah, just go run down your list. Okay. <clears throat> so on my list, I have six games that I'm anticipating uh, that'll be released uh, reasonably soon. So on the first uh, one, which is the most, I guess the closest release, um, is Call of Duty: Advanced Warfare, which is out, I believe, next week or two days, three days. Um, Monday, if you do the day zero pre-order, but technically Tuesday. Yeah. So yeah. So it's like four days, and um, so that's first on my list. I'm not, I'm not pre-ordering it this time because 
I don't know, Call of Duty, the past couple Call of Duties haven't really piqued my interest right away. Um, they're not really a necessity. And uh, so we'll keep going on the list. I have Assassin's Creed Unity, which is uh, going to be a really awesome game, especially for people who like to use uh, online co-op, which is going to be very fun. Far Cry 4, which if it's as good as Far Cry 3, uh, we'll definitely be happy with that. Little Big Planet 3, uh, self-explanatory. The Crew, which is the, the racing game that should be released in December, I believe. or Yeah, December. And uh, Battlefield Hardline, which is going to be released uh, next year. So, yeah. So that's that's a lot of multi-platform games. I mean, really only uh, exclusive is Little Big Planet, right? Yep. Um, yeah, and a lot of the other ones are they have like frame rate exclusivity, like Far Cry Four. Um, I know they're trying to push on the PS4 a lot for graphics, um, but I mean, obviously, either either console will have pros and cons. Yeah, and that's that's the thing that really uh, we'll talk about this later when we talk about the consoles in general. But the PlayStation seems to have a little bit more of a hardware edge with the, the game performance. So in the past, I've been more likely to get uh, multi-platform games on the Xbox. I've been an Xbox gamer first. Um, but a lot of it has to do also with this kid getting a PlayStation. I mean, um, you, you tend to play on the platform that you, you're more, you have more friends on, you know? Yeah. Because um, playing online by yourself is not a, a, as fun of ex experience as playing by yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're playing these, like, a Call of Duty type game, you want to pop into a game with your friends. Um, and it's just not there with Xbox for me at this point. You know, I know a couple of yeah. people with Xboxes, but they never play it. So it kind of sinks. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. Um, and, you know, he plays quite often on the PlayStation. So I got, like, Destiny on the PlayStation side. So We played the crap out of that. Yeah, not so much recently. But well, we were kind of giving it a rest. We were playing. We've been playing uh, Diablo three. We yes. went through the expansion pack, and now we're doing some rifts. Which I don't know. We might. It'd be kind of. I was trying to stream that last week, but OBS wasn't really working. So maybe we'll do another streaming day. Yeah, Diablo um, three is a lot of fun. I mean, early on when it was yeah. got first released, maybe like I think it was like a year or two ago. Um, it was a very different game. It was kind of boring to be honest with you. I finished the game at level 34, 35. With a 100 damage sword. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Now I'm like level <coughs> almost 60. We're, we're both level 64, I believe, out of 70. Yeah. We're both got like legendary gear. It's pretty awesome. Um, <clears throat> Destiny, Borderlands, and Diablo, and all that, those type of games, they all have the similar loot system, um, which I like. I don't know. It's kind of like luck of the draw. Uh, when you when you get like a, a chest or something, it's like, oh, what's this gonna be? And you might get like a legendary item or whatever. I don't know. It's kind of addicting. Yeah, has an addiction. And that's it. what made World of Warcraft a lot of fun for me. I I, I haven't played too much. As, I've only played for about maybe four years. My cousin got me into it, and that's the whole fun of it. You know, you you, you raid dungeons, you play PvP, <coughs> um, and you never know what kind of gear and loot you're gonna get. It's it's always that that little bit of a treasure hunt type of thing. And that's what makes yeah. um, games like Destiny even that kind of fun because you know you're, pl you're playing all these different raids and dungeons and you kind of want that next big gun that next big piece of armor to show off you know yeah which we need to get back into because we haven't really gotten many <laughs> yeah. if anything i don't think i've i haven't gotten a legendary or a exotic yet and so. they've patched the hell of it since we last played like a month ago so yeah and they also patched the playstation um yes. i guess we can mention this real quick uh, PlayStation did have a recent patch where they finally added in themes and uh, skins and stuff, which is pretty awesome. They added a couple other features too, but I was more excited about customization options. Yeah, so instead of having a light blue theme, I had a darker blue theme, so big whoop for me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But it's good to see they're finally implementing that stuff. And also, Xbox has a patch coming out, or if it's not already out... Um, that you can also put your own custom background, which is awesome. Yeah. So it's kind of copying PlayStation, you know. And on the 360, you could have your own themes you and stuff. So. Yeah, you could literally put it on a USB stick. It's funny how long it took for them to do something like, like simple themes and backgrounds, you know. Yeah, it's it. It was kind of like something that should have just came out with the system, but I'm assuming they they even stated when it first came out that they wanted to get all the big stuff out of the way before they went to the smaller theme stuff, which is more understandable for a huge release like this. Yeah. 
So we'll talk more about that when we talk about uh, State of Gaming later yeah. on. Let me go through my most anticipated games. He kind of mentioned a lot of the, the similar ones. Um, let me just talk about Call of Duty for a little bit because that's a big game for everyone. I mean, MLG type players, <laughs> uh, casual gamers. It's pretty much the game of the year that everyone expects that's somewhat reliable, um, yeah. which I'm actually really hopeful for this game because if you guys haven't heard, Sledgehammer Games is my favorite IP through the Call of Duty franchise out of the three places. Sledgehammer Games has, I believe, the best, I don't know, it has the best ingenious i guess that's a way to put it about the games um with mw3 they did an excellent job on it so call of duty's always been the type of game where um i say i'm kind of sick of it and i'm not gonna buy yeah. the next one but hey when it comes out to the new game being released i always get it I, it's just it's so tough to to, to avoid temptation not to get it because you know all your mm -hmm. friends get it and when they're playing it you're like oh i want to play it um, and it's just a simple game to pop in and play here and there. You know, it's not it doesn't yeah. require a lot of time uh, invested, like a, a Diablo or World of Warcraft or even a Destiny. You know, where you're. It's not really time consuming. You can literally hop in a ten minute game if you wanted to. Yeah, <laughs> especially for someone like me, where I don't really play single player campaigns. I'm just about online and leveling up and yeah. all that stuff. So Call of Duty, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I mean. I don't really know what to expect. They're kind of copying Titanfall with a lot of the, the jet packs and jumping around stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't know. I might go pre-order it. Um, see, the thing with Call of Duty is you kind of have to be there the day one and you'll have the advantage online, um, which I might... I've been trying to sell Assassin's Creed Black Flag because I don't want that anymore. Uh, I've been using 99 Gamers. But I haven't been hit up on that yet, so I might bring that in, put some of that money towards it as well, um, because it obviously comes out Tuesday. Plus, if I pre-order it now, I can get the day one stuff. So that's for sure. Yeah, should be should be fun. But yeah, it's definitely one of those games that you want to pick up kind of like within the first week or so, because online gameplay is much better at the beginning. And if you get lagged behind, that's when you get the rage-inducing moments. Yeah, it's not it's not fun once you if you get if you buy the game a week later and you're like starting at level zero when everyone else is so high, um, it's not fun. But I pre-ordered on the PlayStation digital version. Um, I actually I said I wasn't going to get the deluxe edition, but I couldn't help it. I got the deluxe edition. Oh, the with the, pa uh, the with all the pack. the map pack stuff like that. You always do it. You're like, nah, I, I won't get it. I did it for Ghost. Like, like with Titanfall and Call of Duty Ghost, you kind of got screwed over because <laughs> you bought them and you never used yeah. them. Yeah. I mean, because you, you moved over to PlayStation. That's also why. Because like, if we if we were both playing yeah. Xbox, I feel like I would have gotten more use out of it. But um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I feel like even when the maps do come out, I'm going to end up buying them anyway. So I might as well just do it all out. And um, yeah. yeah, I'm really liking the the um, the day zero thing, you know, where you get to play the game a day early if you pre-order yeah. it. So that's neat. I mean, it's it's not it's not anything where like it's uh, they give you extra stuff, which I hate when they do that when you pre-order and they give you extra like levels and stuff like that, where it takes away from the actual game. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I hate when people do that. Um, yeah, that's why that's why like if you jump into Call of Duty like three months after it's been out, you're running into like. Um, you're running into like triple prestige people already. Yeah. Oh, dude. It's like blow your brains out because it's just like, what the hell? <laughs> I barely go over one first prestige in Call of Duty games. Like, I, I don't play that often where I, I can invest a lot of time. The game that I prestige the most was Black Ops 2. That was because it had a good prestiging system where you all you had to do is rebuy the gun and you'd have all the attachments and stuff. All right. Um, so it was pretty easy. But with. With Black Ops 2, I got up to, like, 8th Prestige. Shit. Yeah, I think the highest I went was, like, 4th Prestige and more, uh, I think, 3. I forget which one. I don't keep track. Empire Craft got the Day Zero Edition, so I might buy... The, I'm <laughs> buying it on the PlayStation 4. Um, I might eventually get it on the Xbox to play with my other friends if it has a good Black Friday sale, you know? Oh! Yeah. Which there will be. There'll be, like, $30. It'll be, like, $40 bundle, or it'll be, like, $70 for the game and a year of live or something speaking of which since we're talking about all these games i forgot to mention i saw it on twitter today and it was confirmed target has their yearly uh buy three get 
uh, no, wait, buy two games to get one free deal. And that's going to happen next week. So if you're looking for all these games, actually, no, it's not next week. I am sorry. Dude, I am screwed. It is the week <laughs> of November 9th to the 15th. So that's when mm-hmm. um, Call of Duty is going to be out by that time. Uh, Master Chief Collection is going to be out that following week. So those are two games right there. So uh, just find another game that you want and get that one for free. But let me move. So when is that? Two weeks It from is now? two weeks. Not this week. The next week. So that that's going to be an off week for my pay. Well, just save that's some great. money, you know. Um, you know, I can't. I have to get tires switched over. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> just like you did today. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's another story for the after show. But anyway, um, let me re- continue with my, uh, my list. So I mentioned Call of Duty, PlayStation 4 edition. Um, Halo Master Chief Collection. Oh my god, how excited I am for this. All right, I grew up with Halo being like the definitive first person shooter, and for them to remaster all of them, and especially Halo 2. Holy shit, dude. I, I think that was my favorite game. I, I remember I skipped a uh, day of college to go and buy it first thing in the morning at, at uh, Best Buy, and I played it yeah. all day, all day. And I, I'm looking at these new um, graphics and everything they updated, and they they didn't change a thing in terms of gameplay, but the graphics are just that much better. They, everything's 1080p, 60 frames a second, um, in all four games. So yeah. that is awesome. And you get to... Which it was, what, like 30, 30 frames per second uh, maximum? Max, yeah. Uh, and what, what was it? 480p 240 yeah I, the early ones were 480 and i think halo 4 was maybe 720 yeah it definitely wasn't no halo 4 was 1080 was halo reach was 720 oh. well anyway um I, I was watching uh some mlg players playing halo 2 on the uh, anniversary edition it looks amazing it looks exactly like the get the gameplay mechanics that i, I loved and grew up with and mm-hmm. every single maps included all the map packs Remember Halo 2 had like maybe 50 maps. It was ridiculous. I actually never played Halo 2. Oh. oh. I played Halo 1 and 3 and all oh, the other Oh my ones. god, dude. It was amazing. And then not to mention... At that time, I had a PlayStation 2. <laughs> well, yeah. But not to mention, there's also online co-op for every single game. So like, my cousin, he's never played a Halo in his life. He's going to buy this game, have all four Halos at his disposal, and we're going to go through every single one of them and co-op. And that could have been you too, Matt, but you had to jump ship, so, you know, sayonara. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I, I can't. I think you've seen how... Ex- I don't usually get this excited, um, but I am so excited about this Halo. That's I already have it pre-ordered, pre-downloaded on my Xbox One. So as soon as it goes... I played through, um, I played through Halo 4 with my cousin in one sitting. Yeah. Three and a half hours on uh, on Legendary. That is hard. Well, it got easier. Legendary got easier. I feel like from. Did you play Halo Four? A little bit. I was. I actually didn't play it that much. The single player. It was such a short single player. It was ridiculous. Yeah. That, I... It should have been like an expansion pack for like Reach. Yeah, Halo Four was kind of like the one where I didn't really pay much attention. It was also the first one that wasn't made by Bungie. It was a 343. Three, three. Well, they're they're making well, they're technically overviewing all this stuff too. Yeah, but, but then it, it what they're not making. They're just per, they're just nitpicking at the graphics. They're beautifying, beautifying, it. It, updating it to everything that is today's. Which standard. they do, they do good with graphics and stuff for sure. So it's not really anything that people should be worried there about. There was Still a different. cinematic trailer release. I don't know if you saw this a cinematic ha- trailer for Halo Two released yesterday. Um, it was amazing. I mean, it was like a movie trailer. Um, if if yeah. Halo was ever made into a movie, I would want it to be looking just like that. It was amazing. So epic. Well, did you watch um, the Halo live action? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. It was okay. That was pretty good for like low budget. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, I forget what it's called, but um, Nightfall, I think it was. Uh, for the, the a- live action? Yeah. Um, By the way, Empire Craft Arden said he'll join me on Master Chief Collection, so you better get it. Oh, I am looking so forward to it. It's it's amazing. But while he's looking that up, um, let me go down my list. Um, let's talk about Wii U a little bit. I mentioned early on that I'm really looking forward to Wii U stuff, and it starts with <laughs> Smash Brothers. That's being released later this uh, this month. I think it's November 27th. Um, yeah. 
a month from now, basically. I've always been a huge Smash Brothers fan. I hate fighting games, but something about Smash Brothers. Well, Smash Brothers isn't really a fighting yeah. game. It's different. I don't know. It doesn't feel like a fighting game to me. It's not like it's like, um, what is it? Soul Calibur. I grew up on Soul Calibur. Yeah. On the GameCube, that was my like fighting game per se. But but I don't know. It doesn't feel like that. It feels more like arcadey. Yeah, and that's exactly why I love these you know? that that series, that franchise, because it's very simple. Um, then again, you can be really hardcore with it at the same time. It's a lot like Mario Kart. You know, it, it's not to be taken too seriously. It's a lot of fun when you have a couple of friends over, and there's a big online portion with it. So that's gonna be awesome as well. I don't know if you guys saw the um, like the forty big features of Master uh, of Smash Brothers that they did last week. Um, that was amazing. Like they, they went through every single feature that was that was in this game, and it looks awesome. I mean, they they have so much damn packed to this game. It's not even just about the game. There's so many mini games. There's so many trophies and stuff to unlock, and it, it's it just seems like it's going to be a huge huge game. Yeah, man, for sure. And not to mention, um, they need a game like this. Nintendo, like, they're really struggling. They, they kind of got helped by Mario Kart. That was that's yeah. a huge game. I love Mario Kart, and it's really been well received. You know. Well, Rich and I were discussing. I want to get an. I want to get a Wii U eventually. Um, I because I definitely like Mario Kart, and I, I haven't played Smash Brothers since Nintendo sixty four, so that would be pretty good upgrade. Um, but also, did you see the uh, the menu options for Smash Brothers? How they had like all these tweaks that you can do. It's pretty cool. I must have missed that part. But you can make it like big head mode and like oh yeah yeah all these cool little tweaks. It's pretty. That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, I, I saw that. I was watching that. There's, there was so much that I couldn't even keep track of every little thing. Um, once I get my hands on it, I'll be able to like go through it a little bit better. But um, yeah, man, I am so looking forward to Smash Brothers. And I hope that Nintendo can ride that momentum because, like, they really were... The, the console came out two years ago, and it just hasn't taken off. Um, it's it's not the best console. It doesn't have the best hardware, but um, you buy it for the Nintendo games. I mean, the Mario, yeah. the Mario Karts, the Zeldas of the world, you know? The first-party games. That's all you buy it for. Um, yeah, for sure. And just to round out my list, I also I'm interested in the crew. You know, like Matt mentioned, um, I was looking forward to uh, Drive, Drive Club. Club. But, it's kind of MIA right now. Oh my god, dude, that was such a fiasco. I was so looking forward to it. If anyone is familiar with Project Gotham Racing on the old Xbox, that was my favorite racing of all time. It it was a nice blend of simulation and arcade. More on the arcade type, um, but it did have some flares of, of simulation. Um, and this looked like it was exactly like Project Gotham. So many yeah. early people was comparing it to Project Gotham. Um, the online portion of it looked amazing. And, of course, they said it was going to be free. A uh, portion was going to be free for PlayStation Plus members. And yeah. uh, it's still not out yet. Well, now I have a question. Since I didn't buy the full game... Um, I wonder, like, the people who did buy the full game, are they still getting the experience, like, the online aspect and everything? Because it's, like, literally there's been no news of it. Yeah, so if you bought the game, um, you're able to get the full experience of it. Um, they basically pushed back the free version to bear back on the servers because the servers were really getting hit hard. They didn't anticipate, yeah. I guess, this many people being interested in it. So um, for now, they're just limiting it to the people that actually bought it. So that they can handle the servers as well as possible. Um, well, they didn't really beta test it uh, yeah. at all. I didn't see any beta tests. That, which is a shame because like a big game that really relies on its online servers should have been beta tested. You know. That's why I'm excited for the crew, man. They have a full United States map. Yeah. It takes it takes uh, what is it? I think it was two and a half hours driving from East Coast to West Coast. That's a huge map. Time. So, and I was also kind of looking forward to Forza Horizon 2. Um, yeah. But I played the, the free demo that they released. It's okay. Um, it's a little too much on the arcade side for me, you know? Yeah. It's kind of more like a Need for Speed, which if there was going to be a game, a racing game that I would really want, it would be like a classic Need for Speed. Like if they revamped Need for Speed Underground, put that out as like a re-release title, I'd be all over that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like the good old classic underground. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a shame, man. I've really been 
so looking. Or Midnight Club. Oh, oh, don't even get me started. Midnight Club. Midnight Club on the PlayStation Two and Xbox. Was much, isn't it? Amazing. That was so much fun. Yeah. But I, I've been looking forward to a really good racing game, and there just hasn't been that game to fit the bill. Four to five. I'm not into really hardcore simulation games. Um, I'm so picky when it comes to racing games. I don't know about you. Yeah. Like, do you prefer um, like street racer type or more circuit? I like street racing types. Yeah, me too. It, but it really depends. Like, I didn't mind fours of five, but it was like boring. Um, Gran Turismo. Oh hell no! I won't touch that. Even though it's a PlayStation title, I I, I hate it. Um, we have a couple things in the comments. Um, John Schofield, what's up, John? Never seen you. I don't think I've seen him here before. No, he's new. Um, and uh, welcome, John. Viewer. Thanks a lot for joining. Welcome. Uh, he asked, what do you guys think about the Apple's new test flight app testing, which is pretty much, if you don't know, it's like a black box testing app um, developed by Apple. So it makes it easy so developers can push out their beta apps and just have everyone test it through test flight. Yeah, I think that's um, also, I mean, they, they they really didn't have much of a beta testing for apps uh, in the yeah. past. And this, I think, is really needed, you know, because it, it, it doesn't... Before, people would have to just test internally, you know? And I think uh, companies were given maybe like 50 codes to give out to people to test in the past. But I think this is yeah. a more uh, elegant way of, of actually beta testing. It's more official, you know? Yeah, for sure. And it, it makes it really easy because it's like a hub. So if you get like these people who beta test for a living or whatever, um, they report on it like bloggers. Um, they can just have one app that has all those beta apps in it. So... That should be pretty cool. Um, we'll probably talk more about it in a later episode if it gets a little bit more attention. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, so thanks for the question, John. And uh, EmpireCraft in the chat asks, what about that PlayStation TV, guys? Anyone here going to pick one up? And Rich was going to, but it's not really – it doesn't fit my needs, and it, I don't think it fits Rich's needs, really. All right, so we're going off a little bit on topic, but we'll go back into the games afterwards. Um, PlayStation TV, I was – so looking forward to it, all right? If you guys are familiar with my setup, I have a home office in here, which I have a TV right there. Um, and I put my consoles all here now because I play mostly in here. I have my Xbox One and my PlayStation 4 in here. In my living room slash home theater, um, I have a big screen TV with a surround sound, the whole shebang, right? Um, I would yep. love to be able to play my PlayStation or even Xbox for that matter in that room also without having to lug around my my console um in the past i've had like two xbox 360s and i bought one when they got cheaper kept one in here kept one in my living room so when i heard about playstation tv and the remote play um that sounded amazing like i could have the playstation in here the playstation 4 in here have the apple tv in my living room and whenever i wanted to play it would just basically stream the gaming onto that tv uh, i'd have to worry about saves being on multiple consoles it was just Everything would be on one hub console, and it would just stream over. Sounds perfect, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> watching the reviews on the actual gameplay of uh, Remote Play, it's laggy. I mean, when you play games like we play, like Call of Duty, or especially online, you know, a lot of shooting games, a lot of even racing games, um, that little two millisecond lag can completely screw you over. You know, when you're playing online, so. And it's not even like it's over Wi-Fi even. It's, even if you have an over a wired connection, there's that lag still present. So I, I, I canceled my pre-order on that. I was really disappointed. I was willing to try it out. but And especially at $100, it's not that much. Yeah. But if... No, because, I mean, it comes with a controller too, which is another $30, PlayStation $40. 3 controller though. Yeah. But, I mean, still new. They're still pricey if you were to go buy one now. Yeah. I mean, but I, I got the hundred. I was pre-ordering the hundred dollar one, which wasn't including the um, the controller. That's a hundred and thirty dollars for the bundle. But yeah, um, I, I was so disappointed, man. Like, um, if if you play more simple games like the arcade type games, where um, and especially if you play single player games, I don't think it's as big of a deal that lag. But when you're playing competitively online, where there's already lag yeah. to begin with, Twitch shooters or anything yeah, like that. that's. That. that's where it's not it's not good um similar to this the um sony xperia z i believe that's what it's called um they actually have a thing now where you can strap it onto the playstation 4 controller so it just 
here's my controller, it just kind of goes over the top and it holds the phone up here and it's it's another streaming thing so you can stream it right to that screen there and you can just play right from your console. You can actually power it on right through your controller and it just syncs to your phone as if it's a display. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I remember seeing that a couple of months back. Um, it just, it's basically yeah. a remote play, just like on the Vita on the PlayStation TV. Yeah. But... Um, I'd rather have it like this, though, with the actual controller and a, a different screen, just a smaller screen. Yeah, that looks like a really cool... I would like to try that out. Um, yeah, but that involves getting a Sony Xperia. Yeah, which... Sponsor. <laughs> I'd rather not have that as my phone. I'll stick with my iPhone 6 Plus. Thank you very much. Hey, man, secondary phones. Yeah, well, second. I have secondary... If Sony were to ever sponsor us, I'd take one. I have secondary and tertiary phones, all right? And none of them include a Sony, so... Yeah. Yeah. But anyway... Um, going back to the, to the games I'm anticipating, we talked about the crew. I'm looking forward to a racing game. I'm going to wait to see how this is first. I'm not going to go out and pre-order yeah. and buy it right off the bat because um, I've been let down by too many racing games recently. That um, I've been watching YouTube videos on it. It looks very good. It does. Um, after after the show, I'll show some links to people. It does look good, but I'm still a little skeptical. And I'm also anticipating Little Big Planet. Um, I played the first one. It's a lot of fun. But since I didn't know a lot of people on PlayStation back then, I wasn't really um, as into it. I didn't play it as much. But now that Matt's on it, you know, I think it'll be a lot of fun for us to create maps and stuff like that. That'd be pretty neat. Yeah, I, I love Little Big Planet, man. I played the crap out of the first one because I, I got the PS3 like day one, and that was one of the games that that was like a month after it came out. But I played the crap out of that game. So. There's a couple of notable mentions of games that we're also kind of looking forward to, but not really. Um, we need like an animation, like like the, uh, I don't know, like a ranking system on metals. Yeah. Like bronze, you'd get the piece of wood, <laughs> notable mention. <laughs> yeah, like GTA V. It's being remade for the new consoles. Um, we played the crap out of it when it first we came really out. We really did. Yeah. And they still never released the heist. I don't. Yeah. I don't understand. A year later. Yeah, that was a launch feature. Oh my god. And a year later, they're like, I, you know, I'll just just release it on the next consoles first. Did, wait, are, did they even say it's going to be released with the new consoles? I think they did. I'm not sure. I I wouldn't pull it. I wouldn't guarantee it. I mean, at this point. Oh oh, the heist yeah. part. No, they didn't. I didn't see any mention of that. Oh jeez. See, that looked amazing. I mean, that that's awesome. But why? Why is that so hard to include? I don't I don't know. But anyway, that I mean, maybe if we find it cheap for like twenty dollars, I'll pick it up, but um, yeah. I am not in, I'm not hyped up about it because we play the hell out of it. And you know what's funny? We played the online portion more as a racer. Remember? Like Yeah, it was yeah, yeah, we did a lot of racing. But we did some screwing around, like we would go like the airplanes and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that's all we did was really race. It was actually fun as a racer. It was weird. It was a decent racing game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't. And I remember we do like we'd like shoot up people and stuff every once in a while and like just spend our money. Yeah. I mean, it had no depth whatsoever in terms of a racer, but still, it was just fun to chop on and and race and stuff like that. It was it was pretty good. But um, also another game which I wasn't really hyped about, but I'm hearing a lot of good things about is Sunset Overdrive, which was released this Tuesday. Um, it's yeah. it's from the makers of Jet Set Radio, so it, it, it reminds you a lot of Jet Set Radio on the old Xbox, um, combined yeah. with like a crackdown, combined with a um, uh, uh, dead, dead dead rising. Right. You know, it's yeah, that's how we described it. It's, <laughs> Which I really like Jet Set. That that's like if they were to revive a classic game for the Xbox One, just like don't change anything about it other than graphics. I it would be Jet Set, and I'd like die. Well, you know, if you had an Xbox, you sh I would say give this a try because a lot of people say it's just like Jet Set. So I was watching some things on it. It looked all right. It looked very like um, arcadey. Like you have really short objectives that you have to keep doing. Yeah. You know, what I mean, it's like oh, kill fifty of these guys and then throw this type of bomb onto this. Guy. But I heard like, as you progress, the um, the objectives get a little better. It's not as repetitive. Yeah. So um, that's that. But I don't know if I'm going to pick it up. Um, it has a decent online portion to which all I really care about is online. Um, yeah. But the online seems to be a lot of mini game type stuff. So I might I might pass on this. Um, although it might give me a reason to get the white Xbox, which I'll talk about later when we talk about the consoles. Um, and one last thing. 
if you pre-ordered Evolve or if you're on the Xbox One um, preview program for the software, you will get the Evolve Alpha, which was released today. So yeah. I have it downloaded, actually. I'm going to give it a try maybe later tonight or tomorrow over the weekend. Um, I think it's going on for a week, so have at it. I'm really looking forward to this game, even though it comes out in February. But mm -hmm. um, Speaking of the uh, the downloading, uh, just sorry to backtrack. Was um, Call of Duty, are you able to start downloading that today? Not today, yeah. no. Um, I think it's said in... It's like 9 a.m. on Monday or something. Yeah, it's a weird thing. I, I think it's like... So Monday, I'll just leave it at... Which is, I don't know. I'm not going to take the day off, so I don't really care. I, by the time I get home, I'm sure it'll be downloaded. I have it already pre-downloading at that yeah. time. But um, someone, uh, John, in the in the chat actually asked us what... Oh, I just said that we're going to go on questions. At which is funny, because we were going to talk about this next. Um, yeah. This very topic. He asked, oh, yeah, we'll lead what in. consoles would you guys buy if you didn't have one? Even if you could only buy one. Excellent yeah. question, John, because I, I already have this in the show notes right now. Um, so, as he said, you know, it's it consoles like the Xbox price dropped uh, to three fifty um, from November to January. So that's three. So now price isn't really an option. I mean, it's not really a factor. Cons consider it's three fifty without the Connect, um, and it also includes some some uh, bundles like the Sunset Overdrive bundle. Um, not yeah. the Call of Duty one because that's a one terabyte. That's also that's still I think four hundred or four fifty. Are the bundles? I think I think the bundles are still four hundred. No, not the Sunset Overdrive one for sure. That's that's three fifty, and also it the um, Assassin's Creed. I forget there's another bundle out there. See, I feel like at that point it's like, why did I buy an Xbox One at launch? Well, that's the thing though. Like you get to be the first one to own it you get to have all that enjoyment i would not have given it up i mean for what a hundred dollars yeah. cheaper fifty dollars cheaper um yeah I, i'm glad to have owned it you know i had a, i have a lot of enjoyment out of it in this last year well what i paid 5.99 no it's 500 at launch it was yeah. and the oh yeah ps4 is 3.99 yeah. but still it was like after you done with taxes and games and oh, stuff yeah. i spent like 750 yeah that night but that's on an xbox that's the price you pay of being a uh a launch yeah. purchaser premium user you know <laughs> um i i wouldn't have it any other way i love getting consoles at launch um yeah, it, it gives you an extra special feeling of like you know being an early adopter and being one of the first ones to unbox it and stuff like that it's it's awesome yeah you know um so l let's answer the question if if let's say you had no next gen consoles at this point right and your mom asked you Hey, Matt, what do you want for Christmas? Uh, and you can choose any console. Which one would you pick? The Xbox One, PS4, or even the Wii U? Huh. Well, obviously it depends on what kind of gamer I am. I personally like mixture of single-player and multiplayer. And I play mostly, um, mostly multi-platform games. And... I I like specific, um, like I don't know. I like specific. Um, God, I can't think of the word. Games like per console. So like Xbox has its uh, certain IPs and Sony and Microsoft. Uh, sorry, Nintendo. Uh, personally, I'd go with the PS4. I don't know. This is kind of why I changed over. Um, because I do play only quite a bit of just multi-platform games. So I'd rather get the better experience. Um, and I don't know, it's, it was cheaper at one point, um, which really wasn't a big, big reason why I switched over. Um, but I don't know. I like the PS4 now. I'm, I'm used to it. I thought I'd be like, oh, I don't like the controller layout, but I'm really used to this layout now. Um, so I think, I think it's all depending on what kind of gamer you are. Yeah, for sure. And it's funny cause you didn't put any consideration to a Wii U. Well, I I wouldn't use the Wii U as my main console. Right. That's the thing, cause like, I don't like, I'm not. I wouldn't just play Wii U games. You know, I wouldn't just play Smash Bros all the time. I want to play Assassin's Creed and and Far Cry and stuff, which I would never get on the Wii U. It's just not me. Yeah, the Wii U is definitely a, a secondary console. It's not something you would be uh, using as your primary. Although you can get Call of Duty and all those third-party games, but they're really yeah. dumbed down. And I yeah, they're dumbed down. And there's no one on it, so it's like 
Yeah, and the controller, I mean, you can get the controller pro, but it's not the same. It's it's not the full experience. So, yeah. you would get the PlayStation 4, which makes sense. You have a PlayStation 4. You even sold your Xbox to get it. So, that's yeah. kind of an obvious answer. Um, for me, I have all three consoles currently. So, I think um, it, it would be a tough decision. I think in the past, um, even before, I would say before August, I would say no doubt... I would get the Xbox One. Like I've always been an Xbox gamer. It's always been my my favorite console. Xbox Live is awesome. Um, but ever since this kid got the PlayStation Four, I've been playing it more and more, and I kind of grew on it. You know, the the controller. I wasn't. I, I like the, the Dual Shock, um, but it wasn't my favorite controller. It's grown yeah. on to me. The the whole software and online implementation has grown on to me. Um, that being said, at this point, I would still, if I had to choose one, it would still have to be an Xbox. Yeah, well, I feel like for you, because you have that entertainment center type thing going on, that's a big reason why I sold, I didn't want the Xbox. That's why I went for PS4. So I didn't use that feature. You rely on that feature every day. Well, yeah, literally. You know, it is the center of your entertainment center. Literally every day I have my Xbox One on because even if I'm not playing a game, it's the hub of my entertainment center here. You know, I can uh, do yeah. voice to uh, over connect to change my channels, to mute the volume, um, and all that stuff. So it's awesome. You know, I don't use it as much as I thought I would, um, but it's yeah. good to have. See, I didn't use it at all. Yeah. Well, you didn't really have much TV over there. Yeah, I don't, I'm not a big TV person. Anymore. Yeah. So I watch mostly sports. So it's it's awesome. Like. I could be playing a game and then have the TV snapped in the corner and be watching TV as well. Um, that was something I was really looking forward to when before the Xbox 360, um, the Xbox One came out. I don't use it as much as I thought I would, um, probably because I don't play it as much as I as I thought I was as well. Because my friends don't really play Xbox much. <laughs> he sold his Xbox, so. Uh, but yeah, I, I would still I would still say I'm Xbox One. Uh, number one at heart though you know yeah i mean you're an xbox kind of guy i i grew up on playstation i had a playstation one and a playstation two as a kid i literally that was my first console was a playstation one yeah um my dad and it was like oh we had we had like metal gear solid crash bandicoot and like it's like whatever you know what's funny um when the xbox the original xbox came out um at that point i was a nintendo gamer you know i bought the gamecube yeah. Um, I was so much, I was loving the GameCube so much. My friend, my best friend in high school bought the Xbox at launch and I went over his house and we played Halo 1 co-op at his house. It, it mm -hmm. blew my mind. Like it was <laughs> absolutely beyond any gaming experience at that moment. Like just the fact that we were playing, uh, a really high, uh, graphical game, first person shooter, no less, which I love first person shooters. Um, and just riding the warthog together, I'm gunning in the back, he's driving, you know, and stuff like that. It was just an amazing experience. And and then uh, shortly after that, I bought an Xbox, and ever since then, I've just loved Xbox. Um, yeah, man. So, you know, a PlayStation, I've always had a PlayStation. I never had a PlayStation 1, but I had a 2, 3, and 4. And it's always been, I've had it just to have it, but I never really fully embraced it you know yeah well I, don't know. I feel like the community part wasn't there until yeah. until ps3 middle of ps3 even that middle of ps3 yeah. yeah um because like ps2 had online you could wire it in but xbox the original one had an xbox live and which people used every day and i didn't i never used ps2 online i just played with friends like split screen at my house you know but that was still the era where people had to go over to people's houses to play video games. <laughs> yeah. And also the thing back then is that Xbox Live, everything was all one username. Everything was all integrated um, cross, yeah. cross, cross game. Uh, whereas PlayStation, you had your own login for each single game. Every game. And you couldn't yeah. see someone playing a different game. You couldn't invite them. Um, so it was really uh, segregated, I guess, if you want to say. Yeah. Um, but the PlayStation 3 finally brought everything to one unified login. And that's when it finally took off a generation later. Um, I yeah. don't think PlayStation 4 uh, network is quite up there with Xbox Live. But it's certainly getting there. 
you know? Yeah, it's not, I, I don't notice too much of differences. Like, um, it's not as strict as what you can do as it used to be. Like, you can pretty much do everything on the PS4. It just takes, I don't know, the interface is a bit different than the Xbox One, so I think that's why we kind of, like, still getting used to it, but... Yeah, I don't think it's it's an is uh it's as intuitive to use the PlayStation yeah. uh, UI. Um, granted, now you can do cross game chat, which is awesome. It finally took them long enough to implement that. Xbox has had that yeah. forever, um, but just little things like that where I, I love Xbox. And now the PlayStation Network is sixty dollars a month. It's on par with the sixty dollars a year. I mean. It's on par with the yeah. Xbox Live. There's no... It's like, damn, $60 a month? I <laughs> know. There's no... Uh, you know, when it was free, you could say, oh, but it's free, you know, so they can get away yeah. with a lot of stuff. But now that it's a premium uh, service, they can't just... Oh, it, there's an outage, you know. Um, there's blame because it's free. No. Yeah. They expect... People expect more now that they're paying for it. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, I think now they can provide more. That too, too. So. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, I, there hasn't been too many outages, you know, it's pinned on par with Xbox. No, there's only been one, but that was when, like, all these things were getting DDoS. Yeah, yeah, about It was Microsoft summer. and Amazon and... Yeah, that was ridiculous. But, um, but, um yeah. yeah, so, I, it's been a year, basically, since the consoles have been, the next generation consoles have been out. So, and it's really progressed. Like, if you think about both consoles when they were first released, like, the software... They've yep. really improved on the UI and just the feature set, oh, yeah. you know. I remember when we first got the Xbox One, right? It was almost impossible to, to invite people. And then you had to, to go to your friends list. You would have to go to the, the, the main screen to go to your friends list, which is a whole full page. It was so clunky. But now um, you could actually, when you press and hold the Xbox button, it snaps your friends list automatically and stuff like that. So you can invite them really easily, just like in the Xbox oh, yeah. 360. I remember how laggy it was at the beginning. Uh, like, you'd be like, I don't, I don't remember the problems like right off the bat, but I remember having so much issues and like being so annoyed with the UI sometimes. Like, you'd press the middle button, and it'd be like, wait, 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 and then it'd be like, Vroom. and it's like, oh my god, finally. Yeah, man, it, it was ridiculous. Like, I, I was actually really upset at how it launched. You know, the the software. Um, at that point, I think the play seemed a little bit above, uh, uh, above xbox in terms of software but uh um, yeah i think they're finally improving both so it's we're on the right path a year later you know yeah and it's actually surprising to see how much they they've price dropped especially the xbox granted they took out yeah. the connect but 350 for a brand new console with a game yeah it's awesome well the um the uh call of duty bundle is still 499 so yeah but that's also including a terabyte, terabyte hard drive so if that's something that you're interested in. I actually recently got a three terabyte external hard drive from Xbox. That's just a cheaper way to go. It, it really is. I mean, I paid 80 bucks for that three terabyte. Yeah. And my PlayStation 4 has a one, one and a half terabyte internal. So yeah. I'm, I've decided to go all digital. Like I was really kind of in the middle. Like, should I have, I, I cause I like having, um, you know, physical. physical media. Like if you could see back there, I have my games for both consoles. It's a small... But you have a couple PS4 games, yeah. but you're kind of going all digital from now from on. From now on. Ever since I started with Destiny Digital, um, yeah. everything's going to be digital. Because I like not you know, having everything at my disposal on the console. I don't have to get up and change the discs and stuff like that. And either way, even if you go um, physical copy, you still have to install the, the game and have the memory available. So might as well have the digital version. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, so let's let's talk a little bit about other stuff. We talked about gaming a lot today, um, but I just want to run through a couple of tech tips. Um, so YouTube finally released uh, the 60 frames per second feature to a lot of uh, users now, which is awesome. I remember I just saw a micro uh, a Mario Kart gameplay video, and it was yeah. buttery smooth, man. Like oh yeah, you saw Mario it before, Kart. right? Mario Kart, dude. It looked way better. And I watched a um, Counter-Strike gameplay, 60 frames per second, and it was, like, constantly changing. Like, they had a bar, and it would slide across 30 versus 60. Yeah. And it was like, holy crap, there's less, way less screen tearing. It was crazy. Yeah, it's... For a lot of people, like, in the gameplay uh, realm on YouTube, this is going to be a huge, huge plus. 
Now there are some caveats with this 60 frames per second feature. Yeah. You have to, it's only available in Chrome now. You can only watch it in Which Chrome. Which you should be using anyway. Yeah, but you know, people might want to use Safari. But either way, Chrome, yeah, it's not a big deal. But YouTube also has discretion as to which videos use 60 frames per second. So if you think you're gonna yeah. vlog or just do any random video and use 60 frames, they're not gonna do it. It has to yeah. be for motion intensive videos, like gameplay or racing, racing and stuff, stuff like, like that. that, you know, or like extreme sports, you know, when you yeah. use a GoPro, stuff like, like that. Like GoPro video, yeah, yeah, all that stuff. Um, which I guess we can quickly mention, answer a question that was er, asked way early. They asked what we thought about the Go, uh, GoPro Hero 4. Um, it's pretty cool. It's not, it, they're kind of getting out of the um, consumer market. They're going for professional video with the 4K. And the price tag is like six hundred, seven hundred dollars, so it's kind of like a little out of out of range for people, normal people, anyway. Yeah, I mean, four K video that that's where everything's going, you know, and it's gonna get cheaper and cheaper as we go on. But think about it, five hundred dollars for a video, uh, something that records four K, that's not that yeah. bad, you know. Um, you can get like a, a one of those red uh, cameras that can cost you know five thousand dollars. The red cameras are thirty something thousand. Or that, <laughs> so you know. I think it's thirty six. If you want thousand. something that you want to record, something where it's, there's a, a lot of motion and stuff like that, like I thought about getting a GoPro for my car, like just mount it on the yeah. dashboard, do some like you know car videos where I'm going really fast or just like vlog type um, type videos. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I would if I would go for the go for the Hero Four because I don't. I mean, now that the Hero 4 is out, you can get the Hero 3, and Cheaper. it still has 1080p, yeah. 60 FPS. <laughs> because 4K, it's awesome, but like I'm not big enough of a YouTuber to, to warrant. And it's and it's really intensive on resources oh, yeah. to upload. and I don't know. I feel like it's more annoying right now. We don't really have the computing power unless you have like top-of-the-line stuff. Not to mention, a lot of people can't get the... Like, even if they're watching a 4K, they're not really getting the full experience because they don't have a 4K monitor. You know, you're watching on a 1080p monitor. It's not yeah. 4K. I mean, it might be a little bit more detailed, but you can't really appreciate it. it. You know, even on my, my computer, it's um, it technically it's a 2K monitor. So if someone yeah. has a 2K video up, I'll watch it. It looks a little better, but 4K makes no difference. Yeah, it's like my my MacBook screen. That's... Almost 2K. Yeah, exactly. But it's like the new iMacs are 5K. You probably notice it on that, but it's like at that point, you'd have to have a really, really, really big screen to notice the big details. Yeah, or you know? or in this case, you're sitting next, you're sitting up close to the iMac, you might be yeah. able to tell a difference. Um, cause like, it's not really super noticeable. Yeah. But have you have you seen 4K TVs in like Best Buy and stuff? Yeah. I think they look amazing. You know, you really know. Yeah, they the look difference. good, but it's it's all dedicated for 4K and it's a huge screen. Yeah. And it's like Blu-rays don't really have 4K right now. You can't really find any Blu-ray 4Ks. That's the problem. Uh, like I, I when I was getting my TV in here, I thought maybe should I should I splurge for 4K, but the content yeah. isn't there and it doesn't look like it's going to be there anytime soon in, in large quantities, you know. Mm -hmm. Um there's no streaming in 4K. There's no Real, there's a couple of Blu-rays in 4K, but it's not, not really. <laughs> really there that much. So yeah. I think it's still a year or two away from becoming, you know, not even, I wouldn't even call it mainstream, but like yeah. where people like myself Accessible. would want to buy it. Like not early adopters, not mainstream, but somewhere in the middle where you want to be kind of ahead of the curve, but don't want to pay a billion dollars for something. Yeah, like the people who pre-order consoles. Yeah, or maybe a little bit slightly ahead of that because also 4K is a little yeah. bit more expensive. But yeah, you get the idea. Yeah. Um, but that's a good question. Thanks a lot, John, uh, for asking that. Yep. Um, so last tidbit that I want to talk about. <laughs> tidbit. Tidbit. Um, so I don't know if you guys heard, but Tim Cook came out this morning that he's gay. And that it was all over the blogosphere. Everyone was talking about it. Um, so, Matt, what do you think about this? Do you think it's a negative thing for Apple as a company? Do you, what do you think about it in general? I, I mean, I don't really care about it. It doesn't affect my view on anybody. Uh, I don't know. He kind of, on the blog post, he was like, yeah, I'm embracing my, my inner being. <laughs> 
and it's a gift from God. I was like, okay, what, whatever, man. Whatever floats your boat. I don't have any prejudices against anybody like who's gay or whatever. So I don't. Know, I don't think it's going to change the fact that um, Apple's successful. Um, if anything, uh, I feel like Apple's not not really a radical company if that makes sense i mean no offense to people who are like republicans or whatever but i don't know for some reason it reminds me of like a democratic style party well it really is because like you get all the people that are the create it's like the creative mindset people the people that are very diverse like when you when you see people in starbucks you know all the yuppies and hipsters out there yeah that's what that's what i mean yeah all those people are like pro gay rights pro progressive like yes yeah. like- apple's always been a company about diversity about being who you are about diversity they even say they yeah. they hire based on diversity they don't like to have just one type of people working for them so i mean it, i don't to me personally i don't care if someone's gay i mean it's personal preference obviously how you live your lifestyle yeah but it doesn't um it doesn't change the fact that there are people still out there that's will that will be prejudiced sense. about it especially middle america you know um like alabama you think of the deep south that's yeah that's what i'm saying like i don't know I, there's people who prejudice against everything people prejudice against people who are straight so it's like yeah. color your skin whatever. uh your religion every, it's always something but yeah you got to think there will be certain people out there that will be like oh their ceo's homosexual so i'm not going to buy their products anymore you know, yeah. so I, I don't think there's going to be enough people out there to that have that kind of sick make mindset difference. to make a difference in terms of the bottom line, in terms of their stock yeah. price. But it but there will be some there will be some. But there always is with any that's the type of thinking you, you have to think about, like Tim had to think about when he came out, because like it's not just like a regular person coming out of the closet, you know, even a celebrity. Um, he, he's yeah. the CEO of a huge multi-billion dollar company with more gdp than more than most countries you know so yeah he's a huge figure for him to come out something like this it took first of all it took a lot of guts no matter who you are it takes a lot of guts yeah, to man. come out with it and also the fact that he has a business business implementation uh impact on this on this decision a big business impact <laughs> so you know who knows what the what the uh what the, the public thinks about this you know like we mentioned before yeah. So, like I said, I don't, personally, I don't care. I mean, I saw this, I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I kind of figured he kind of was, he kind of seemed like it. Um, but I, it doesn't change my, my mind about him. It doesn't change my mind about Apple, about the products I buy from them. But I just wanted to bring it up because there will be people out there. And it, it, it's kind of a big deal, you know, in terms of news, right? Yeah. I mean, it's... Uh pretty big deal no matter who it is like with a celebrity wise anyway yeah so just throwing that out there but like mike yo just said in the chat there's a lot of people where he lives that are super homophobic and i believe he lives in like the carolinas so that makes sense you know the deep south people are really super conservative you know they have one way uh mindset of how people should live their lives so um that makes sense and yeah i mean it's kind of Expect it no matter what. Yeah. So, I think we're going to wrap up the show here. That's all the tops we had for today. I hope you guys really enjoyed the show. I enjoyed it. Um, but, Matt, did you have anything else you wanted to uh, close out with? Um, no, not really. Uh, stay tuned for next week. Uh, we'll have some more tech topics. Hopefully, next week we'll have actual tech topics. It's been really slow in the tech industry lately. So, Yeah. Yeah, maybe next week we'll do a mixture of like tech topics and a Q&A if we have enough people in the chat. Um, I noticed yeah. we had a couple of new people, so that's awesome. I always love to have people interacting in the chat, and especially new people, you know, people we've never seen before, subscribers I've never met before. So that's that's why we do these shows, so we get to meet people and interact. And uh, we're going to be doing a little uh, after show once we cut off this. So if you don't join us... Um, if you're watching live. this recorded, you could join us live 10 o'clock Eastern time. Every Thursday we'll be doing the show. So uh, make sure you uh, put it on your calendar. All right. But um, yeah, write it down. Put it on your phone. Siri, chirp, chirp, you know, 8 o'clock. Let me know. Generation text on that type of thing. Yes. But um, yeah, uh, until next time, guys, we'll see you later. Peace. Peace.